February 23, 2022 interview with Nicole Albert. Massachusetts State Police Christopher's Mason Colonel Superintendent R. Scott Warmington, Deputy Superintendent. 2. Detective Lieutenant Brian Tully, No. 3520 from Sergeant Yuri Bukhenik, No. 3543 Subject, Nicole Albert, DOB December 18, 1977-81-858-0204 at 34 Fairview Road, Canton Re, O'Keefe MB Homicide Case, 2022 one on February 3, 2022, at approximately 5.20 p.m., Trooper Proctor and I traveled to 34 Fairview Road, Canton for a pre-scheduled interview with Nicole Albert, DOB December 18, 1970. Through our investigation into the death of John O'Keefe, Nicole had been identified as a witness present with a group of friends at Waterfall Bar and Grill on January 28, 2022. Nicole is also the resident with her husband Brian, who invited some friends and family back to 34 Fairview Road in Canton following the bar closing for the night and witnessed events inside the home. The following is a summary of the information requested and provided by Nicole during that interview with Trooper Proctor and myself. After being invited into the home by Nicole and her husband Brian, Trooper Proctor and I formally introduced ourselves and thanked both of them for their time. Nicole began by saying that she did not know Karen and had never met her before the 28th of January. She had met John O'Keefe once or twice out in a social setting. Nicole shared that she knew that John had recently moved near her sister's home and only knew him as Kaylee's uncle. On the night of January 28, Nicole said she met her sister Julie, daughter Tristan, and her boyfriend at dinner at approximately 7.30 p.m. at the Waterfall Bar and Grill. At approximately 9 p.m. Jan and Matt McCabe met Nicole and Julie at the bar, and then at approximately 10 p.m. Brian came out after his return from New York City. At approximately 11 p.m., Nicole remembered that John and Karen came into the bar and were positioned on the opposite end of the high-top table the group was occupying. Nicole recalled John coming over once and asking if they wanted anything from the bar. Nicole stated that John was wearing jeans, sneakers, and a hat. At approximately midnight, Nicole said she left the waterfall and was met at her home by her sister Jen McCabe, brother-in-law Matt McCabe, and husband Brian. Nicole said that all the guests left her home an hour later at approximately 1 a.m. on the 29th of January. Later on, during the morning hours of January 29, 2022, Nicole stated that she was still in bed when her sister Jen came into the room and shared with Nicole what had transpired outside and that John was found deceased on the edge of her property by the street in the snow. Nicole stated that she never left her home, and by the time she came downstairs, the Canton Fire Department must have transported both John and Karen from the scene. According to Nicole, there was no fights, arguments, or altercation at any time during the night between anyone present at Waterfall or her home at 34 Fairview Road in Canton. Nicole stated that everything was fine, and she remembered John talking to her sister Jen at the bar. Nicole did not observe any injuries on John while he was present at the bar. Nicole shared that she and Brian walked out of Waterfall before John and Karen and that the two were still at the bar at that time. When asked about the utility box at the edge of her property, near the flagpole where John was found, Nicole stated that it had been open and slightly damaged for a long time before January 28, 2022. Directing her attention to her home following the waterfall, Nicole stated that she did not hear any arguments or noises coming from the outside of her home and that neither John nor Karen came into the home at any point. Nicole went on to say that she was unaware that her sister Jen had even invited John and Karen to the house following the waterfall. Without having any additional information to share with Trooper, Proctor and I, we thanked Nicole for her time and concluded the interview. Respectfully submitted, Sergeant Justy Baba No. 3545 Sergeant Yuri Bukenik, No. 3543 Massachusetts State Police Norfolk District Attorney's Office, February 21, 2022, interview with Julie and Chris Albert, State Police Christopher S. Mason Colonel slash Superintendent R. Scott Warmington, Deputy Superintendent. 2. Detective Lt. Brian Tully, No. 3520 from Sergeant Yuri Bukenik, No. 3543. Subject, Interviews of Julie and Chris Albert at 22 Maple Street. On February 10, 2022, at approximately 5.30 p.m. Trooper Proctor and I proceeded to 22 Maple Street in Canton in order to conduct a pre-scheduled interview of Julie and Chris Albert at their residence. Both Julie and Chris were present at the Waterfall Bar and Grill the night of January 28, 2022, and then followed to Brian Albert's home in the early morning hours of January 29, 2022. The purpose of the interview was to get their recollection of events both at the bar and then from 34 Fairview Row. The following is a summary of information exchanged between Julie, Chris Trooper Proctor, and I following formal introductions, Julie Albert, DOB January 30, 1976. 
provided her cell phone number to be 1 to 58974 Chris Albert, DOB November 5, 1971. Both stated that it has been four or five years since they knew the victim John O'Keefe and only met Karen Reed once in a social setting prior to the 28th of January. Julie told us that Karen was not her friend and only an acquaintance and that John was her friend. Chris told us that he had never exchanged personal info with John prior to the 28th of January. Chris went on to say that earlier in the day John came into D&E Pizza with his adopted son Patrick. Chris shared with us that he had plans to go to CF's or the waterfall later on in the evening. Julie texted John that she was at Waterfall around 8.45 p.m. telling him to get down there. At 10.41 Julie sent the last text to John, and shortly after, John and Karen walked into the bar. 3. Julie remembered that as John and Karen walked into the bar area, Karen pulled a drink out of her jacket and sat it onto the high dock table. John offered to get Karen a new drink, but neither Chris nor Julie remember whether he followed through with it. Shortly after this, Julie developed a migraine and left the bar to go home. Chris stayed behind with the rest of the group for a few more drinks. Chris told us that he purchased a round of shots of fireball whiskey for the group but was not sure exactly who drank theirs and who did not. Chris told us John was drinking Bud Lights during the evening. Chris told us that John actually got Karen the same drink she brought in, which he assumed was vodka soda water. 4. Chris stated that when he walked out of Waterfall Bar and Grill, he remembers John and Karen walking in the opposite direction of his path, and suspects that he walked right and the couple walked left on Washington Street. Chris recalled John being dressed in a baseball hat, gray sweatshirt and jeans. When asked about the drink that Karen brought into Waterfall, Julie told us it was a taller cylindrical shaped glass with a lime in it. Both Julie and Chris agreed on that Karen was not sh underscore faced and that John is always reserved. Julie told us that jokingly John and she had a conversation about a block party since the Alberts moved away, and that he, John, was not intoxicated, and Karen was totally herself. According to both Julie and Chris, nothing about their behavior indicated that either one was drunk or even buzzed. Both held a conversation perfectly fine. When asked, Julie and Chris stated that there were no arguments between anyone present at the bar in general, but specifically no issues between Karen and John. Julie told us that she was asleep at 4.55 a.m. on January 29, 2022, when her phone woke her up and it was Jen's missed call. And that is how she found out about John dying. When asked, both Julie and Chris told us that John did not have any injuries to his face during the evening of the waterfall, to include tears and rips on his clothing. When asked to list everyone present at their table, Julie and Chris had mentioned everyone previously accounted for, additionally Chris mentioned a Greek couple that was at the end of their table. TPR. Proctor since has positively identified the two and scheduled an interview with them. Without having any more information to provide, TPR. Proctor and I concluded our interview of Julie and Chris. We thanked them for their time and left the residence without incident. Respectfully submitted, Sergeant Judy Bublett, number 3543, Sergeant Yuri Bukenik, number 3543, Massachusetts State Police Norfolk District Attorney's Office, February 21, 2022 Interview with Ryan Nagel, State Police Christopher S. Mason, Colonel Slash Superintendent R. Scott Warmington, Deputy Superintendent 2, Detective Lieutenant Brian Tully, Number 3520 from Sergeant Yuri Bukenek, number 3543. 1. On January 29, 2022, at approximately 6.04 a.m., Canton Police Department received a 911 call from a woman reporting a male party, John O'Keefe found in the snow at 34 Fairview Road. At the time of the 911 call, there was heavy snow and the temperature was in the teens. Officers Saroff and Mullany were dispatched to the scene along with Canton Fire and EMS. Officer Saroff arrived on scene and observed three females waving at him. Looking at 34 Fairview from the roadway the three females were in the left corner of the property. Officer Saroff observed the victim lying on the ground as two of the females were performing CPR. The three females on scene were identified by Canton PD as Karen Red, Jennifer McCabe and Carrie Roberts. Additionally a male party was identified as being in the area the night prior and possibly could have witnessed the victim arriving in the area of 34 Fairview. 2. The said male was identified as Ryan Nagel, DOB March 13, 1993, who was contacted by his sister Julie Nagel, DOB December 4, 1997, asking for a ride home, while visiting with her friend Brian Albert at 34 Fairview. Ryan came into the Norfolk District Attorney's Office for a pre-scheduled interview on Monday, February 7, 2022 at 2.35 p.m. The following is a summary of the information requested and provided by Ryan during that interview with Trooper Proctor and me. Ryan confirmed that he was contacted by Julie, 
requesting a ride home. At the time Ryan was with his friend Richie Danchuono, DOB May 6, 1994, who was driving his grey and color Ford F-150 pickup truck with Ryan seated in the front passenger seat and Ryan's girlfriend Heather Maxson, DOB April 5, 1994, seated in the back passenger compartment. Ryan recalls Richie driving down Cedarcrest Road from the direction of the Kennedy Elementary School. As the F-150 approached Fairview, Ryan remembers seeing a set of headlights of a mid-sized black SUV coming from the opposite direction of Cedarcrest. Subsequently Richie yielded to the vehicle allowing it to make a right-hand turn onto Fairview as their F-150 then followed making a left-hand turn onto Fairview. Ryan told us that Richie stopped the F-150 directly in front of the driveway belonging to number 34 Fairview, and remembers the black SUV stopping along the right-hand curb towards the left side of the property as you look at the home from the street. When asked, Ryan stated he did not observe any erratic operation by the SUV as it turned from Cedarcrest onto Fairview or at any point while in his presence. Ryan went on to say that their F-150 remained in front of the home for a period of time that was no longer than five minutes, at which time his sister Julie came out of the home and asked if the three of them would like to come inside. Ryan refused the invite, and Julie stated that she wanted to stay a while longer and would most likely spend the night at 34 Fairview. Upon conclusion of their conversation, Julie retreated back inside the home, and Ryan noticed that the SUV pulled up a few feet to the far edge of the property line between number 34 and the neighboring property where the flagpole was located, along with some bushes. Ryan stated that the SUV's driver did not appear to place the vehicle into park as the rear brake lights were illuminated to include the third top center light at the initial positioning and after it had pulled up. Trooper. Proctor asked Ryan if at any point he heard screams, yelling, or any noise coming from the black SUV while he was on Fairview, to which he stated no. Ryan added that as Richie pulled away from 34 Fairview, their F-150 drove past the black SUV, at which time Ryan observed the interior light on and a Caucasian female operator seated inside the vehicle holding the steering wheel at the 10 and 2 looking straight ahead of her. Ryan told us that he did not see anyone else inside the passenger compartment during his brief observations of the SUV as they drove by it. Ryan did not see the SUV leave and did not note any damage to the vehicle as he remembers. When asked, Ryan stated that it had just started snowing approximately half an hour prior and there was a coating of snow on the ground. While present in the area of Cedarcrest and Fairview, Ryan did not see any other vehicles operating besides the F-150 and the black SUV. Without having anything further to provide about the evening, Trooper Proctor and I concluded our interview with Ryan. Respectfully submitted, Sergeant. Guy Micklick Sergeant Yearly Bokenick, No. 3543 Massachusetts State Police.